All right, so you just bought a puppy or you got one from the rescue and it's time to find a, uh, find yourself a vet. Now, it's obviously very easy to find a vet. You just ask some friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, you know, go on Facebook and ask some people, does anybody know a good vet? And then just, you know, simple as that. Uh, the other thing, of course, you just, uh, you know, go online and find a vet yourself, uh, call them. You know, if you want to get a good deal on pricing, call a couple of vets and ask them a couple basic questions. How much is it to visit them? Um, often you need to bring a stool sample, which I'll ta talk about in a second. Uh, what are the follow-up vaccinations, uh, spaying and neutering, uh, what else is required? You just ask them and ask them for some pricing. It's very simple. Write down the price, say thank you very much, call the next one. Unless you're happy with what you hear, and just, you know, that's your vet. Um, so what I would recommend the first week when you get the puppy, I highly, highly, highly recommend at least to bring a stool sample to the vet. Just in case you don't know what a stool sample is, stool is poop. So bring some of that in a baggie or a container and take the vet papers with you. Bring the stool and the, the vet papers to your vet. You can even leave your puppy at home if you don't want to have an extra cost. It depends a bit on the vet. Some vets are okay that way, others are not. So again, I don't know how your what your vet's like, so just keep that in mind that some vets are okay if you bring the, the, the stool and the papers, others say, no, 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 we want to see the puppy as well. Whatever it may be, um, if you don't want to do that and have an extra cost, just call a different one and go to that one. So bring the stool because they can tell by the stool if the puppy has worms or parasites. It's not uncommon that they need another treatment. Something that I've heard a lot is that people get a little upset when they think that the puppy should have been perfect. Unfortunately, sometimes they have a parasite. It can happen. It's not uncommon. There are actually parasites in a very large uh, group of, the, of, of most of the adult dogs. In a lot of cases, a lot of dogs, it's believed that almost 75% of adult dogs have some form of a parasite, um, some worse than others, of course. So it's very likely that your puppy has some parasites. Parasites are usually very easy to treat, depending on what it is, of course, but the most common ones are usually between, you know, in our area anyways, between 10 and $20 to treat. Again, this all depends on the vet and the area you live in. Usually the uh, bigger cities, the bigger the city, the higher the cost, the higher the cost of the medication. Usually outside of a city, it tends to be a little bit cheaper. So that is kind of the uh, uh, rule of thumb there. So bring the stool sample and then depending on when the, the puppy is due for the needles, I highly, again, highly, highly, highly recommend from our experience, and this is how what we learned over, over time is that when you bring a puppy home, do not give them a vaccination for at least two weeks, 14 days. Give the puppy a time to adapt to their new home. This is absolutely crucial because if you give the needle too soon, because they're nervous and stressed, their immune system tends to be weak. When we are nervous and stressed, People can get diarrhea and stuff like that. You have a nervous, uh, very nervous, upset immune system. If you then get a vaccine, you can actually not always handle two at once. And, and the way they explain it to people too is, if you have a cold, don't get the flu shot because you have a weak immune system. When you have a weak immune system and you get the flu shot, you might actually get the flu. And that's how I like to explain it with puppies as well. You bring it home, it gets upset sometimes, sometimes very obvious, sometimes it doesn't show. Whatever you do, wait about two weeks before you get the next needle. It's safer for the puppy, just give it two weeks. After that, you start the, vac the second or third vaccination whenever you go back onto the schedule. Um, that really, from our experience and over time, and from what we've seen and heard, really is the safest for the puppy because some puppies have gotten sick from the needle if they got the needle a little bit too soon. So that's why we now tell everybody always to wait at least two weeks before you get the next needle going. Now, depending on where you live, uh, depending on what country or state or province, um, there may be different regulations than in our area. I know for a fact that in Ontario, where we live, 
you every dog must have the rabies vaccine that's the one mandatory vaccine the rest is optional but depending again where you live you may have different rules and regulations so ask your vet and see what they say in general a puppy needs three vaccines um, they're they tend to be the same three booster shots and depending on on the on the person you got them from they either gave the first one already or you have to start from scratch that's possible as well so count on three uh, needles if the first one was given already great then you only have two more visits to go uh, for for the for the vaccines that is um, so that is something uh, that can happen of course uh, sometimes you have to have a third visit because the where you got it from you didn't get the the third needle once the needles are done you want to give the puppy about a month or so the earliest before you get them spayed or neutered you just want to get the puppy to get back to full strength because once you give us a, a vaccine the puppy's immune system gets thrown a bit out of whack because you give the puppy a life virus they now have to fight it off then it takes about two weeks for them to get up to full strength again and if you immediately spay and neuter after that it's again just again that's why i tell people just wait about a month after the last needle before you actually go through that because again spaying and neutering is usually a, a bigger operation for them so that's one other cost that you may uh, get of course i highly recommend you spay and neuter um, it's it's in in most cases clinically proven that it's better for them if you're not going to breed then don't you know, if you're not going to use it get rid of it that uh, tends to be uh, the better thing uh, for that after that it's usually a yearly follow-up just uh, it's it's good for your for your dog to have at least a, a once a year checkup just to make sure everything is, uh, is still functioning right um, because your dog can't really tell if something's wrong and that's why you go to the vet at least once a year uh, it's up to you if you want to do it more often um, or it depends again what your vets like and what they say but it tends to be a one-year follow-up and usually every year you do a needle um, so again that's uh, uh, up to your vet and, and your local regulations as well and now it's time to move on to the next video